Good afternoon, everyone. It's theCUBE live at VMware Explorer 23 at Venetian Expo. We've been here all day. This is our first day of coverage of three days of CUBE coverage. We have two sets. Lisa Martin here with Rob Treche, John Ferrier and Dave Vellante on the other set. We're about to have a really fun spirited conversation. We've got some news to break to you and we've got a couple of guests here to help break it. Josh Odgers is here, the founder and CEO of end-to-end -end enterprise architecture and Matthias Eisner, partner at ComDivision. Guys, Hello. welcome to theCUBE. Fantastic, thanks for having, thanks for having us. us. So there's some news, you already broke it elsewhere, but we're going to break it here on theCUBE. Josh, talk to us about what you guys have, what's new, what's exciting. Yeah, look, we're really excited. Basically, ComDivision and end-to-end -end enterprise architecture have formed a strategic alliance. So we've got a global team of experts, VCDX certified, highly certified architects, and now we're going to deliver consistent architecture globally to our customers. And so, really. what will the Alliance prioritize, especially from a customer mm. demand perspective? Yeah, so delivering consistent outcomes. So at the moment, in architecture, it's very inconsistent. So this is one of the things we're trying to focus on, is making sure documentation, as well as the business outcomes, and the implementation is done consistently at a high level. Nice. And when you're talking that you're delivering it all over the place, where do you deliver? What, what's like kind of your, the markets you're addressing, and what are the customers that you're looking after? look like what so if I'm sitting there looking and I need uh, you know a, a VMware expert and that and I'm trying to figure out all the stuff that was just announced today and mm. how that applies because I want to use modern I'm building modern apps and I'm maybe somewhat in AWS mm. maybe somewhat in Azure and I'm trying to figure that all out with my on-prem mm. what what does that customer look like to you uh, so as far as our reach uh, was your first question. Yeah. So EMEA is very well covered by ComDivision. ComDivision's yeah. been around for a very long time. Uh, might let Matthias talk to, to ComDivision a bit more. Um, yeah, tell yeah. us, give us the backstory. ComDivision, story. we're firstly mm. based in Germany, uh, Münster, that's our headquarters. That's where it all started in 1996. We have offices in Belgium, Austria, and even in the US. Mm. Uh, so we moved into the whole VMware and cloud business starting in the mid of 2000s. And that's where you started building the, uh, the whole cloud journey and moved along the whole path. So then we met Josh Otters mm. a few years ago. Yeah, so yeah, we've actually known each other a long time, um, obviously in the VMware community and the VCDX communities. So basically ComDivision uh, CEO Eve reached out to me and he said, oh, I really like what you're doing. And we discussed how well aligned we are in terms of our goals for customers and what we're trying to achieve as our companies. Uh, and we thought, why not? create that alliance uh, so we can do it globally. So we've got EMEA, the Americas, and APJ covered with VCDXs in every geography. So, yeah. Matthias, talk about the value of this relationship, the alliance, from Com Division's perspective and what value it's going to help you guys deliver. So, first of all, what Josh mentioned, uh, we are thinking in a pretty similar way in terms of we have a customer-centric approach on building a solution. Uh, Many are thinking about, we only chase huge customers, huge projects, but that's not the main point. Mm. We are focusing on what is business critical, what is mission critical, and build a solution around to support the business needs. Right? We support customers in many different industries like service providers, automated, financial industry. So it's all over the place, but because in the end, the industry doesn't matter. It's always about the business outcome we focus on and how to architect the proper solution to support the business needs. Mm. And that's what customers want, right? It's all about meeting them where they are, helping them achieve their, uh, their outcomes and their objectives. Absolutely, and also it's not so much the size of the customer, but the complexity of their requirements. So right. some customers in Australia, for example, are a lot smaller than in the US, but their requirements are just as complicated. So it's actually more difficult to architect a business critical solution under those constraints. So that's where that expertise is really required. Yeah, it, it makes sense. And I think, mm. help people understand why the VDX certification, mm. VDCX. Mm. VCDX. VCDX, <laughs> I can't even get the acronyms yeah. right, mm. is such an important piece of that and why that, that is. Because there's, there's some people who maybe not are as familiar with that certification. Yeah, look, absolutely. I think VCDX is not very well known, yeah. but it's effectively the PhD of VMware. So you have to go through the VCP level. You have to take multiple VMware certified advanced professional exams to then get your VCIX, implementation expert uh, badge, 
And then you have to submit your documentation set to be reviewed by VMware to see that it's up to a standard. Following that, you actually attend an in-person defense where you present that and you're quizzed by a panel of experts. Oh. So this is not a multiple choice exam that you can kind of fluke and guess. Right? This is something you have to prove expertise throughout the whole journey. So that's why we love it. That's why we have six VCDXs, in fact, in our alliance. So. And on top of that, I, th I personally think it's a very sad story that the global knowledge about the whole VCDX program is not very huge. It's not a very common certification, yeah. and companies are not specific, or customers are not specifically asking for highly certified people. I once had the story that they were asking for a VCAP, and we said, we have a VCDX. Yeah, I don't want that. I want a real certification. So mm. it's not common knowledge. Mm. But on top of that, mm. from our perspective, the VCDX is only a starting point. Mm. It's your first step on a journey to be a more complete or mm. a total architect to provide an even better solution. I yeah, feel like true. you guys could be like, you know, the, the superheroes that tag team together to raise more awareness for this and help folks understand the value in it yeah. to them, their organization, and their customers. Yeah, we're definitely trying to do that. But I think, you know, what Matthias said is true. The methodologies we learn from VCDX and other expert level um, architecture certifications, we're building on that. I had my VCX 12 years ago. So we haven't been stagnant for 12 years, right? We're growing from there. So we're building that expert level architecture, uh, methodologies, documentation sets, and business outcomes on top of those proven methodologies. And, there, and there's, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, think about going to a doctor and he tries to cure you with the knowledge 12 years ago, right? Mm. Doesn't Ooh. work at all. Oh. You don't want that. No. It's the same for architects. Mm. You need to be ahead of technology to provide the proper solution. And there's different categories for it as well, right? Or different parts of the certification and mm. specialties, or, and is that how that works? Or is it just very general with all the VCDX? Um, there's four different tracks. Okay. So there is a data center virtualization, uh, there is a network virtualization, uh, desktop, and there's also cloud. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have uh, all bases covered in terms of VCDXs, yeah. so, and VCAP as well. So, you know, pretty much everyone, I think, between our alliance has double VCAP as a minimum. So what's, what's double VCAP? So that's the VMware Certified Advanced Professional, okay. which is the prerequisite for the VCDX. Oh, wow. So that's we cool. have a very high bar in terms of our staff. Even if they're not VCDX, I would say because they apply VCDX methodology, they're already there and above in a lot of cases. So working together to provide like expert services globally. Mm. Talk a little bit about code development. You guys go way back, you tell your friends. What, is that, what does that look like mm. and how, how are you guys achieving that? Yeah, so actually we're working on a really cool project at the moment, which is still under wraps, but uh, we look forward to announcing that on theCUBE for sure, right. at some stage in the future. <laughs> uh, and the idea of this is to create something, first of all, unique in the market, that's going to make sure that we can deliver future-proof solutions to customers that are very measurable against business requirements. So I think the, the big lacking in architecture today is we have a lot of solution architects who are very technical, but they don't know how to map that back to the business. So what we're doing is both the enterprise architecture on the business side and the solution architecture on the technical side and bringing them together because they have to come together to get that good outcome. And I, I, I see the dyna dynamic duo helping them come together. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. well it's, it's important. <laughs> and, Absolutely. And, and I think I, I love how you're talking mm -hmm. about it because I, again, having been on mm -hmm your side of the fence and mm -hmm. built products and gone out and mm -hmm. helped customers in, in, you know, deploy them and also way back in the day uh, when it was GSX, mm -hmm. I actually started out on my little VMware journey where we were uh, bringing print servers together for a very large insurance company that I had worked for. But I, I think, what are you seeing from your customers that has, because I think it, it seems like, you know, even the messaging VMware has had, it's about upskilling the customers and bringing them on this cloud journey. Mm. What are you seeing from your customers and how you're helping them as mm. well? So starting with customers, our perspective is mm. start with getting your basics done right instead of trying to do fancy implementations. You need to be the rock solid fundament, otherwise you can't build a house on top of it. So what we see a lot are customers, they're buying stuff, either hardware, software, licenses, whatever, and then they start trying to link all the bits and pieces together and wondering, 
why the whole solution they think it is is not working at all, not solving any business of, uh, business they have. So what we try is to convince customers saying, guys, let's tell the business requirements, start with the architecture, and then get into the uh, process of buying hardware and software you really need instead of creating shelfware. Yeah. Right? You have a ton of software sitting there, not being used. The only thing it does is consumes money yeah. and space. Yeah. Mm. And doesn't deliver an outcome. Yeah. Right, and that's the problem, where, where you know, costs go up and the outcomes aren't there to be able to demonstrate the value and what you bought in the first place. It sounds to me like you guys are really kind of aligning these two sides, helping them come together to understand the business requirements, the architecture, how that needs to dovetail to deliver that value. Mm. And it has to come first. So, you know, I remember throughout my career, Someone says, hey Josh, can you do a design for us? Of course, I would love to. And then they say, here's the hardware. And I'm just, it's too late. Yeah. At this stage, I've got all these constraints to work around and the customer has paid good money for all the hardware and software and they don't get the outcome they expect. So we want to make sure customers engage us early, engage us often, of course, and then we do the design from a business and a technical perspective first. Once that is validated, then we can deliver the physical layer. So the conceptual layer comes first, logical, and then physical. Which makes sense mm. um, to, uh, to a, a fair degree. That mm. sounds like that might be a cultural change though within organizations mm. to adopt. How do you do in our last minute or so here, how do you help companies on that cultural transformation? Because that's not an easy thing for people to, that are used to doing it one way mm. to adapt to a different way that, that actually is better outcomes. Yeah. I think they know. They felt the pain. Yeah. So when I make a statement like that, that we need to do it first, they go, that makes sense. The last project didn't go that well. So, absolutely. And first, what I would like to add, and you also need to understand the customer's mm. business. Mm. Otherwise, you can't provide a proper solution. Absolutely right. Right, you need to really kind of get down and double click, understand that. What are they trying to do? Mm. Who are they trying to, what's the customer experience they're trying to deliver? Mm. How are they doing it now? How can they be doing it better? Guys, thank you so much for joining Rob and me on the program, talking about thank what you. you're doing together. Exciting news. We look forward mm. to seeing the, the uh, play in action sometime soon. Absolutely. And your next announcement. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll look forward to being on back the on the Cube. And uh, yeah, maybe at the we'll next see. Explore or yeah. Hey, you never soon. know. Awesome. awesome, guys. Thank you so Fantastic. much. We appreciate your insights and your time. Thank you. For our Thanks guests for and for Rob Strache, I'm Lisa Martin. Keep it right here on the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage.